Hello, I'm Patrick Resco. I'm leading EF's investments in the life sciences. Today, EF talks, life sciences, the missing link in your portfolio construction. Thank you, good afternoon. My name is uh, Patrick Gresco. I'm co-leading the venture capital activity of EF with a specific focus on life sciences, technology transfer, and social environmental impact. And today I'm here actually to talk about uh, the status of the venture capital life sciences industry uh, in Europe and give you a perspective from EF. But before I start talking about the current status as of today, I'd like to make a step back in the, in the past and go back to actually 2003 when I started my career in, in venture capital at EIF, that was already at EIF. And 2003 was characterized by um, um, the spillover effects or the effects of uh, the burst of the bubble, the dot-com bubble in 2000, 2001. You remember that. A lot of companies with a lot of promises, uh, skyrocketing, skyrocketing valuation on uh, um, the stock exchanges, and suddenly investors lost confidence because the fundamentals were not right and the whole market had collapsed. And it collapsed in 2000, 2001, but the effects were still felt in 2003. And that had some effect on the technology industry, but also and above all on the life science industry. The life science industry at that time was characterized um, with a couple of misfits between um, business models in life sciences and the venture capital model. So the characteristic at that time which were associated to life sciences business models was first of all a very high capital intensity. It needed a lot of money to develop a drug and bring it to the market. A lot of money, hundreds of millions of euros. The second one was that it needed a lot of time, uh, more than 10 years to develop those uh, type of companies and with a binary outcome. So we had to pour a lot of money and wait a long time until, to, until we discovered that actually the drug or the therapy uh, didn't work. That was the characteristic of the companies, but on the other side, we have also characteristic which are associated with the venture capital model. A venture capital fund has a limited amount of money, a finite amount um, of money, which is provided by the investors, and a finite amount of time to deliver the results to the investors. And those characteristics had a misfit with the characteristic that I had described earlier about the business models of um, uh, life sciences companies and life sciences business models. Um, so there was a collapse, a very strong collapse of appetite of investors for life sciences companies at that time. Uh, nevertheless, uh, the European Investment Fund, with its policy mission, uh, continues supporting venture capital fund managers focusing on life sciences uh, in Europe, but we were not supporting everyone like we used to do in the past. We had also learned our lessons, and one of the lessons we had learned is, was the need within these VC funds the, the, to focus on notably uh, dynamic portfolio management policy. So making sure that the fund managers had understood that there was a need to put more money into the potential winners of the portfolio, into the potential success stories, but also being able to find a way to pull the plug earlier on the potential uh, losers. And only that dynamic portfolio management policy would allow generating risk commensurate uh, returns. We had also put the onus on fund managers who had understood that their failures in the past were not only due to external factors, the collapse of the IPO market, but were also due to their lack of understanding of what were the business models who could provide a suitable fit with the venture capital model. So we had adopted that, that approach a bit more, uh, uh, um, I would say, demanding towards the fund manager, but that coincided as well to some external factors which were not in the responsibility of EIF, which were simply a maturing of the market, a maturing in the sense that there were entrepreneurs who were still coming back to the market. Uh, some of them had been successful, some not, but they had learned from their past mistakes that they were recreating companies and recreating companies in a much better way because leveraging the lessons that they had learned in the past. We had fund managers who, as I mentioned earlier, had also learned some lessons from the past and came with better suited model for supporting life sciences companies. Another element which um, provided for a maturity um, of um, uh, the market was um, actually entrepreneurs who were not recreating a second or a third or a fourth company, but who were becoming business angels. So they were not creating companies anymore, but sharing uh, their knowledge and financial wealth to support newly established entrepreneurs and younger entrepreneurs. And some of these successful entrepreneurs had also become venture capital venture capitalists. So they were providing a lot of um, 
I would say, expertise to these VC fund managers, which was eventually shared to the underlying uh, uh, entrepreneurs. The number of uh, startup events focused on life sciences has also exploded within the, the, the European uh, continent, allowing a sharing of the best practices between the different hubs, bef between UK, France, Germany, the Nordics, and another, other emerging uh, areas in, um, in, in Europe. So all that together had quite some uh, benefits, which today are clearly visible in the portfolio of EIF. Uh, as I said in the past, life sciences venture capital was associated with a, um, a poor results. Today, as a matter of fact, when we rank the list of the best performing funds within EIF, from, from the best one to the 10th best one, after the, after the 10 best ones, five are actually life sciences fund managers. We have almost 10 fund managers in the portfolio of EIF, which are delivering a double digit net IRR. This is something which is absolutely unknown um, on the European market, unknown to the worldwide market, that the venture capital market who is focusing on the life sciences industry in Europe is finally delivering results commensurate, uh, uh, results commensurate to the expectations of um, uh, uh, DLPs. And with the outcome that in Europe there is a growing number of companies in different fields of uh, therapeutics uh, who are becoming worldwide, we, worldwide leaders in their domain. Uh, so hopefully with that um, I have been able to uh, inspire some, some some appetite from, from, uh, from you to dig deeper into the life sciences uh, portfolio of EIF. We're there to help you actually uh, understanding better what's, what's in, our, in our black box and, and give you access also uh, to those fund managers who are delivering very promising, prom promising results. Thank you very much for your attention.